I was actually asleep when the page went off this morning. Had a bit of a lie in. Said so crew assemble, crew assemblers, make your way down to the station quickly and safely. There's no no urgency to the job. We got down there, we found out it was just a, a tow job for a seven metre boat that had steering issues. Making our way down there, choppy conditions, nothing too much. We arrived on scene uh, as they were putting the bridles onto the uh, onto the capstans to tow them. One of the casualties actually fell overboard. Um, so immediately it goes from just a standard routine job to a, a fairly urgent job. We need to get them out of the water. On the back of the boat, the, uh, the tiller actually totally broke off, so I had absolutely no no control of the boat whatsoever. Um, unfortunately, my wife fell in the water as she was um, trying to secure one of the ropes, so um, we had no option but to go on the RNLI boat. You know, I feel a little bit uh, a little bit a little bit ashamed because you know it's, it's something you obviously hope you're never going to have to do. But all the safety stuff we had on board, we you know we did all the checks like we normally do. Uh, fortunately, today wasn't a life or death situation, but uh, but yeah, you can see from what they did today, they're um, incredibly skilled and uh, got to just be. Be grateful they're there for us. So. The RNLI's aim is to save lives at sea. Um, and if you take towing or running out of fuel uh, as a factor which influences people needing to be brought in quickly, it's generally the first phase. I'm a full-time member of staff for the RNLI. Uh, I'm here out t training the uh, the crew at St Helier Lifeboat Station. Typically, the RNLI recommends sort of either weekly um, or bi-weekly training for most of their volunteers, simply because of the extraordinary conditions that they go out in. Um, the all-weather boat could be out in, as the name suggests, all weather. So, um, just simply doing a towing exercise needs to relate to anything from a, a night like tonight, where it's very benign, to quite a rough, gnarly uh, episode at three o'clock in the morning. So it's capturing all of those experiences, making sure people are ready to go. Cool, I'll try and answer for him, but he is conscious and responsive. Just screaming quite a lot because he's in a lot of pain. Okay, screaming quite a lot. Open fractured, right left leg. to recover dead Fred. So dead Fred's a, a mannequin that weighs a lot of, he's heavy. I joined in about April time um, and there was a, a handful of us who joined and uh, we're going through loads of training. So Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, but it's the guys are doing a great job and being really patient with us, but we're all enjoying it. So we use these cards, they're called casualty care cards, and they basically help us, guide us through the process of explaining some, whether somebody's big sick or little sick. So obviously they're big sick, they might need oxygen, they might need antinox, etc. And if they're little sick and they're green, um, just gives us an, uh, more options. Okay, so we want to assess his response, voice alert, pain and un unresponsive. Okay, the time now is 6.30, so we're going to quickly write that down. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello? So there's no response. Okay. I've been involved with the r Life for over 10 years now. I, I was born in as a volunteer myself. Um, and I've seen in that period societal change where the demands on home life, work life, and the balance of then committing to, a, to an organisation such as the r Life is, is is challenging. So I think for um, volunteers today it has never been harder to commit to doing something extraordinary for the community um, and they deserve a massive pat on the back because they are doing a great job. Hold on! 